In this video, we're going to try to use W3 Total Cache to speed up your WordPress website. Yeah, I said try because it didn't work out the way I thought it would be. Log into your website. If you're still using WP Admin, no. mm, that's nope. not no. a very safe way, so please watch this tutorial about securing your WordPress website. Two-factor authentication, really safe. And we go to plugins and we're going to add new. Look for W3 total cache and we press on install now. Then press activate. The first thing we need to do is of course create a benchmark. We're going to use three tools for this. First we go to PageSpeed Insight from Google and you fill in your URL over here and press analyze. Then while this is running we also go to ping them the website speed test. Test from where your target audience is and press start test. While this is also running, we go to GT Metrics, fill in your URL on GT Metrics and press test your site. This website with no caching enabled at all doesn't really score well. And also on desktop, it's just really poor. Also, Pingdom is giving us a C with an 80 and a load time of one second. Hmm, that's not really good. And GT Metrics is also not very impressed with a C. So to show you what we're working with, this is an actual website, not a template or anything. I've created this website in a YouTube tutorial. You can see it if you want. This is a web shop. It works actually. It is interactive with all of these things and this section and also here the background moves and we have all kind of CSS elements in there which are just moving and showing up when you scroll. We also have this mega menu. You can actually click on it and here you go to a product in WooCommerce. You can add this to cart, different variations. And when you scroll down, you will see all this extra information about the product with a FAQ and well, it's just a very complete web shop. We're going to optimize and see how far we can go. Once it has been activated, you will see over here a new performance tab. We're going to walk through all these options of W3 Total Cache one by one so you can actually really set it up the right way. We go to our dashboard. This is the Total Cache setup guide. Let's walk through this. If you want to help developers out, you can accept it or decline it, whatever. I'm going to accept it. Press next over here. A nice feature of W3 Total Cache, they're the only one, they have a test page cache option. So click on it and then they're just going to check the first time. And now you should actually look at this list and to see if there's anyone which is has the fastest time over here. If you're not actually sure, then just press it again. They're going to test it again. Now you can see that some things actually have changed. Why is this? Well, some hosting companies work with different kind of caching inside of their host. So the first time you load it in, you get different results than the next time you load it in because the next time you're using a cached service. So we're going to test page cache again. But I know my hosting company actually offers memcache. If you don't know for sure what your hosting company is using, just check these scores and use the fastest one. In my case, it is the disk basic. Let's test it one more time. The fastest version right now is the storage engine memcache. As we still need to configure it, just choose the one that has the lowest time score. Then you will be good. We'll be setting it up later on. Press on next. Of course, database cache, test it out also. And again, in the results, you will see that memcache is the fastest one on this hosting company. Just choose the one with the lowest time, press next. Then we have object cache. Also, you need to test it out. Again, memcache is the fastest one. So I'm going to select this one and press next. Again, test the browser cache. This is a little bit different because we don't have any cache control header because we are relying on this plugin. So just choose enable, press next. Lazy load images. Yes, you want this. So enable it and press next. And then we go to our dashboard over here. Now, welcome to your dashboard. If you now see this, the following memcache servers are not responding or not running. It means you have to go into your hosting company and enable memcache. This message will automatically disappear once the issue has been resolved. Well, we're going to talk about this later on in this video. If we now scroll down, you will see on your dashboard there, there's nothing really there to see except for upgrading to pro and buy now premium service, sign up now and install another plugin of 
this company. So the dashboard, well, it's not that interesting in comparison with other speeding and caching plugins. Then we go to the next option, which is the feature showcase. If you click on it now, some different features that we need to unlock in here. But if you scroll further down, you can see all these surfaces. We're going to cover them one by one, but we're going to use the left menu over here. So don't worry, all these things, image service, page caching, lazy loading, minifying, all these things will be covered in this tutorial. To do that, we go to the general settings over here. And then we're going to scroll down. I have never seen this on other plugins, so this is a great feature. If you enable this, then you would have a preview mode that's not been seen for other visitors except for you. When you use this, it's very useful if you have a lot of visitors coming to your website every single moment. If you don't have that and you're on a live website, and well, just keep this disabled because it makes things a little bit easier. Then we scroll down and the first thing we're going to configure is the page cache. The page cache has been enabled and the page cache method is used memcached on this hosting company. If you drop down this, you will see the normal things, uh, very dependable on your hosting company. In our case, memcache is the fastest and we will be enabling this in just a second. Then we scroll down and we go to minify. Minify is actually really great, so you need to enable this right now. Then you get a warning from W3 Total Cache, which actually says, well, minifying your CSS could break your design. Well, of course, we know that, so we're going to press I understand the risk. Let's keep the minify mode on auto this time. The minify cache method on our hosting, it should be memcached. Maybe you have an opcode or a Redis. Just choose the one that your hosting company provides, and you will see it over here. If these are all blinked out, Please check with your hosting company if you have one of these things like opcode, memcached or redis. Almost every hosting company has one kind of caching method available for their clients. Let's use memcached and the minifier are great. After this, we scroll down. We have the opcode caching. If you use the drop down, you will see the only one available to you right here. This is the Zend. This is enabled. Great. Database cache. Enabled, memcached, object caching, also enable it, the one your hosting company provides. Browser caching, of course. But we're not using a CDN on this test, so just keep this off. So when you actually need a CDN, well, you will need it if all your visitors come from a different place than where your server is located. For example, this website is in the Netherlands, in the Eemhaven. That's where the big data centers are from Google Cloud and SiteGround and I think hosting are also. So we have a lot of servers inside of my own country. So if my target audience are only Dutch people, then I'm good. I don't need a CDN. But I have clients who sell through the entire Europe or even into in the entire world. In that case, you really need a CDN because your base server is still here in the Netherlands, but your clients come from America or Asia, and then you need a CDN. If you enable this one, you actually need to sign up with Stackpad uh, or one of these CDN providers, but they're actually not free. So for this tutorial, we're going to disable the CDN. You can only use reverse proxy if your hosting company has varnish installed on their servers. If they have it, you need to enable it, and then you put in the IP address provided by your hosting company. If you don't know what I'm talking about and you don't know what your hosting company has, just disable this one. Google PageSpeed, you can actually authorize W3 Total Cache to connect with the PageSpeed Insight API on your behalf. That's pretty nice. So let's enable this one and show it in the dashboard widget. Press authorize and then you need to log in with your Google account. If you're not comfortable with this, just hit the backspace button to go back else. Just press your Google account over there. And then Google PageSpeed Insights API authorization was successful. All right, scroll down. We're going to enable the Google PageSpeed dashboard widget because I like it. Then we go to user experience. Lazy load images should be on. This is actually a technique where only the images are loaded that are immediately inside of the screen of your visitor. And when they start scrolling down, then the other images are loaded. We're going to disable the emojis because a lot of people don't actually use this anymore, especially not if you don't have a website where people can comment on your blogs or page. We're going to disable the WP embed script. We're going to disable jQuery migrate at the front end. And let's scroll down. 
fragment caching again you choose the one from your hosting company memcached in my case all these settings are actually great so keep it like they are and we have the debug mode you only use this when bumping into some troubles and then we have all these settings which you can export and import your entire configuration useful if you're deploying a lot of websites on the same hosting company all right what we're going to do right now we're going to press this blue button over here save settings and purge caches right there now everything has been successfully updated so this really bugs me a little bit so what we're going to do we're going to enable memcached on my hosting company so this particular website is actually hosted at SiteGround. i have the go geek plan i have a couple of clients on there it works amazing if you want an 80 percent discount check out the link in the description of this video when you have selected your right website account over there you go to speed in here and we click on caching and we can see that we have an nginx direct delivery we're gonna first turn this on of course and after that we can go to dynamic cache nothing to do over here and then we go to memcache memcache is what i'll be talking about so let's enable this one and it has been enabled for all websites close this and flush the cache then go back to your wordpress website and then you refresh in this page the warning is gone so it works then we go on the left side we were with general settings let's go to page caching click on it and then we see that page caching via memcache is actually enabled well done this works all these settings are great except uh, this one don't cache page for locked in users if you actually have a lot of people logging into your website like a forum or a blog or whatever then disable this option then you will then they will also see a cached version of your website which actually helps them in speed but if you have a lot of people working on your website then you can actually use this feature don't cache pages for following user roles and i only want the administrators for example and that prevents that you need to purge and flush your cache every single time you made a change on your website if you have aliases running on your website i don't know why you should have this but then you can enable this and put them in over there best practice is actually to redirect your aliases to your real domain name then we go to cache preloading now this is a interesting feature of w3 total cache when you enable this feature what it actually does is every 900 second 10 pages will be cached and saved to your server once all pages has been cached with preloading it will start again with every 900 seconds of course this has some impact with very little but it has some impact on your server so what i suggest to do is we're going to change the update interval to 9000 seconds especially if you're not changing a lot of things on your website constantly if you have a news website for example just keep it on 900 but if you have a still website for your business or whatever just keep it on 9000 that's actually really great but you want to have the preloading caching enabled because it's a really nice feature but here you need to fill in what your seo plugin actually uh, provides as a sitemap with Joe's this is for example your domain name in my case wpress.com slash sitemap.xml that's mostly used uh, the standard sitemap if you have a SEO plugin in here you can go in there and find your sitemap yourself or just try this in your website and then we go further only check this button if you have events on your website if you don't have it just leave it like this we scroll down we have the perch policy all these things are actually excellent so let's go on the rest api well i have already disabled it in my security plugin because it's actually more of a curse than a blessing in these days until wordpress replaces this with the wordpress api we still need to disable it then we scroll down we go to advanced all these settings are actually really great we don't have to change anything of it except the memcache hostname and port if your hosting company provides another port or ip address for redis memcache varnish or whatever you can change it in here in this section you can add some exceptions to the w3 total cache plugin for example if you don't want to cache certain pages or posts or whatever tags categories authors you can all fill them in in here most websites don't need it so let's save it in and we have some notes great we're gonna press this button save settings and purge caches over there okay well done then we go on the left side we go to minify options in here the general settings are great at the minify 
Then we have the HTML and XML minify settings. All right, here things are going to get a little bit tricky. Why? If we're going to enable this one and we press save settings and purge gestures, the first thing you need to do right now is to check if your website still works. So how are we going to do that? Well, not the normal way, like just visit your website. You're going to right click on it. We're going to open it in a private window because that way we're not locked in and we can see the real cached website. And when it's loaded, what you need to do is scroll down and see if everything still works. For example, all your effects, the color of your buttons, and all these things. Well, I would say this is a positive test. Everything works great. Then we go back to WordPress. And what are we going to do is we're going to inline CSS minification, inline JavaScript, and line break removal. And again, save settings and purge caches. Do this one. And we're going to check it again because there is chance that things might break this time. Open up your website in a new private window or incognito or whatever. And then you scroll down and we're going to see if everything still works. Looks good. Looks good. Nothing has been broken. Looks great. Excellent. All right. Great. Let's see our product. Everything still works in here. This looks great. Does this one still work? Yes, add it to my cart still works. Then we have all this information. All right, everything works really great. If you see some things are broken on your website, just uncheck this one, save it, check it again. If things are still broke, enable this one again, disable this one, save settings. Then you're gonna just test what works best on your website. I'm using Diffy on this website, which I think is a really great product. And as you can see, everything keeps running and working smoothly. So that's great. Once you're done, we continue and we go to the JavaScript minify settings. Very important, powerful feature. We need to combine and minify it for actual page speed. Just keep this all on default. If this doesn't break your website, then it is excellent. Then we also have a HTTP to push. Enable this one and then scroll down. Go to CSS minification. Combine and minify, yes. And then we're also gonna to enable these two. And also enable the HTTP to push. Once you have done this, press save settings and purge guesses and check your website if everything still works. If everything not works, just disable this one and see if that makes a difference. If it does, enable it and go to try only to minify only or combine only. Because you actually need CSS minification because it's really speedy up your website. All these things are great. If you have a username or a password with memcached, then you can add them in over there. Most hosting companies don't use this, but it could be in your case. Again, in here, you can ignore and specific pages and CSS files. Once you've completed, press save settings and purge caches. Then we go over here to the database cache. This one is great. Don't cache it for locked in users. Again, these are all excellent. Then we can have some exceptions. We're not using it. So this is actually great. So all these settings are actually great. Then we go to object cache over here. All these settings are excellent, so we don't need to change anything. Let's so go to browser cache. So in general, we also need to set expires header, of course, very important. Cache control is there, entity tag is there. Mm, yeah, you can do this, but I don't know if it actually, well, we can enable this one also. I don't know if it really actually do something, but let's enable it. Then we have the GCP compression, very important, keep this enabled. These are all good, just leave them as it is. And yes, this is all great. Then we have CSS and JavaScript. Also set the expire header, it's very important. And let's also set the W3 total cache header. GZIP is on, great. And that's it, HTML and XML. Again, expire header is on. Also the W3 total cache header, great. GZIP, yes. Media and other files, expire header again. Cache control, really important. Also enable the W3 total cache header. Then we go even further and then we have the security headers. All these things are actually great. Just keep it on this because I have my entire security done with a real security plugin and not a caching plugin. So let's keep this all like this. Wow, there's actually a lot of these options. Safe setting purge caches in there. All right, real great. Then we go over here to the cache group settings. 
Now, cache groups is a really interesting feature and I think it's really old. Why? You can actually create different kind of user agent groups. For example, all people from using a tablet will go to another theme when they hit your website. Well, that was very needed. Well, that's a very neat feature if you're living in 1984, because then we had different kind of themes and problems with optimizing everything wasn't responsive. But step a few years later, 2023, you don't actually need this. However, it can be fun to tinker with it and change it, but for most websites. But again, on most websites don't enable a thing of this. All of this is just all about the cache groups. We don't need it. Let's go to the next one, CDN. If you use a CDN, these things are important to check and to see if everything works great with your CDN. In our case, we don't need it. So we go over here to fragment cache. Now fragment caching is currently disabled and you can only unlock it if you buy the pro version of W3 Total Cache. Um, I'm not sure if you actually need fragment cache because I've never tried it out and tested it to the max to see if this thing actually really works. If we go to the next one, FAQ, you will go to the GitHub and you can find in the wiki some explanations about things. Then we go to the next one, Google PageSpeed. If you click on this one, you will go to the analysis page of WD Turtle Cache inside of your WordPress website. This is actually really fun. So let's just keep it running and we go to the next one, user experience. Click on this one. Then we have the lazy loading, which is enabled. Works great on our website. But if you see that some images are not loaded, they're just blank, disable lazy loading because in some themes it might be a problem. When you go to support, you actually loading in a iframe within the Total Cache website, which asks you to accept cookies. And here you can just buy any help you need. That's pretty nice. And I totally understand why they do this because hey, developers have to make money, right? Then we go to install over there. This install page is actually a well, kind of an explanation what you need to do, but we already did all this. And then we have the rewrite rules in your HD access file and again, some rules and well, it's all great. You don't need to do anything with this. We've already done the setup guide, so you need don't need to walk through. On the about page, you can see, well, we actually created this really great and what this thing actually does. The next page is the extension. In the extensions, you can activate some interesting things. For example, AMP, if you're using AMP on your website, Accelerate Mobile Pages. Um, I actually don't know what Google has done with AMP because it was real hot, but now it just seems like they let it die or something. Interesting. Uh, if you're using Cloudflare, you can activate this one. If you're using the Genesis framework on your themes, then you can enable this one. And then we have the image services, new relics, Farmify. If you have Joe's SEO or WPML, check these boxes and then all will be great. Let's go to the last one, statistics. Of course, you need to upgrade. So really nothing to see here. Congratulations, we have set up W3 Total Cache. Now let's see if our page speed has actually improved with the three tests we done in the beginning. If you actually want to retest this, then without losing these results, just go over here, check on your URL, copy it, open up a new tab and paste the address and press go. Now we can actually press analyze again and it will rerun it. Copy it, open up a new tab, paste it in and go. And then we're gonna press start test. And then we go to GG metrics. We're gonna do the same, open up in a new tab, run it and we're gonna press retest. All right, let's first go to page speed inside. This was the original 25 and 54 on performance. <gasps> what? So we went from a 25 performance to a 20 performance. How does that even work on desktop 54 and we go to 69. I'm not impressed W3 total cache. I'm not. Let's go to a pingdom. From 80 to 83. And GG metrics from a C to a D. <laughs> this can't be right. This cannot be right. 
Wow, so this is the new test as you can see 949 and this is H46. Our mobile we have 25 originally and now we have 19. On desktop, what is it? 68 and on desktop we had 54. So wow, it has improved just, just a little bit. Look at this. Let's go to the website speed test pingdom. We have a C and an 80. Let's go to the new test 83. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, did I do something wrong with W3 Total Cash? The last one, GT Metrics, we go from a C69 to a D61. I'm gonna try another approach. I'm quickly going to download WP Rocket and see if that does bump up my scores. We go over here, we're going to uninstall everything. So I'm gonna disable everything first. I'm going to save it and I'm going to deactivate W3 Total Cache over there. I'm going to delete it. Okay. Then I go to my file manager of the website and I go to HD Access to see if there's anything left from this is all security. So that's great. Save it. Then we go back to WP Content. We go to we go to delete all these things. So we're going to delete the entire cache folder over there. Delete it. We're going to delete this entire folder of W3 caching. We go to plugins. Here are good. And we go to. Then also in here, we're going to see if there's any caching folders in here. There's not. It's great. So then we're all clean and we can start to reinstall another plugin. So with no caching at all, if I now rerun all the tests again, I should have a different outcome. Analyze it, start it, and retest it. If you're also interested in WP Rocket, go to wp.discount. And from here, you go to over here, WP Rocket. Then we're gonna get the code and then you get a 10% discount. Then I go to install WP Rocket. I'm gonna download it. Plugins. Add new. Up WP Rocket. Install it. Activate it. Setting this up is actually way more easier. File optimization. Minify it. Yes. Combine it. Yes. Optimize it. Remove it. Yes. Minify. Yes. Combine. Yes. Load it, yes. Delay it, yes. Save it. Then we go to media, enable it, enable it. Add missing, save it. And we're done. Let me see if everything works right now. WP Rocket tells us to wait another few seconds because it has to process our pages, of course. All right, it has been done. Now let's go over here and rerun it again. Let's open it in a new tab to see the difference actually. Analyze it again. And let's see if we can run it again. GT metrics. Oh, wow, this is actually a big difference. I mean, I'm sorry, guys. I This is just insane. I mean, come on. How is uh, how Spring them holding up? <laughs> it's actually. Now this is interesting, guys. Um, it was actually this, GG Metrics. The news is this. This was a very interesting video. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. I'm glad to discuss it. Maybe I did something wrong. Maybe it's the combination with Divi and SiteGround. I don't know. All I know with WP Rocket, we got amazing results with W3 Total Cast. Really nothing happened. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you guys in the next video.